what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, I wanted to share with you this old hybrid rocket engine I built many years ago, uh, I believe back when I was in high school actually. <laughs> this is a cool little, uh, little setup here. I designed it to fit a bunch of acrylic rods I had, and I think I still have some in stock, so we're definitely going to be giving this sucker a try today. You know what, before I get into that, <laughs> Wanted to send a huge thank you to William Darwin. He uh, shot me over this beautiful Fujifilm X-T1. It's a hell of a camera. Um, I'm still not using it as my primary filming camera. I'm, I'm trying to kind of learn the ins and outs of it a bit before uh, I do the camera any injustice. But beautiful piece. Starting to learn it a little bit, so soon I'll, I'll be making the transition over. It's got manual focus which is awesome. So thank you so much to William. Back to this sucker. <laughs> so you can see here, pretty simple uh, demonstration hybrid rocket engine. And the cool thing is with the acrylic, it allows you to actually see the inside of the combustion chamber. Obviously you can't pressurize it like crazy because uh, it would probably blow on you or melt through the acrylic and that'd be an ugly day. I haven't changed the O-rings in this in probably a decade, so I'm curious to see how those are looking. Now I made this on my cheap Chinese metal mini lathe, so they are good for something. There we go. And optimally this would not be made out of aluminum, but it is for very, very short run times. Nothing crazy going on here. So got a graphite nozzle, divergent, convergent section. It actually looks pretty good. Pretty nice. Now where are the O-rings? Okay, they're all smushed in there. I'm going to have to get the old O-rings out, replace it. What we're going to do is turn an acrylic rod so we can actually see the inside of the combustion chamber. And I do want to test a couple other fuels because I want to move into some larger hybrid rocket engines now that we have an unlimited source of pressurized oxygen. And I think this will be a pretty damn sweet little test rig. All right, so just put a couple new O-rings in her. They're looking nice and pretty. And this is the old acrylic rod stock I have. Fits in there pretty nice. Obviously that's a little too long. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll lop this off to size, drill a core through it, and then pump some O2 through there. Use a little uh, Kleenex or something as a fuse. <laughs> now for uh, the prevention of backflow, I have two. This is an absolutely terrible setup. Please do not replicate this at home. But I have two check valves to prevent the oxygen from being able to follow any sort of flame path back into the hose. Otherwise, you'd be lighting your hose on fire. No one wants to light a hoe on hose on fire, I'm sorry. Um, so, decent little setup here. Not the best threading I've ever done. That was pretty ugly. A little bit of off axis. <laughs> but it should work. I know it's worked many times in the past. So let's turn a rod and fire this sucker up. Should be poking through. And we're out the ass of her. There we go. Just gonna polish my rod here. Gotta make it look presentable for the camera. Back when I was 13, I could probably polish this in about two minutes flat. Oh, she's a beauty. Check that out. So you can see we definitely had some melting kind of up at the top there where it looks hazy. But we can see through that tube pretty damn good. Definitely get a nice view of the combustion chamber. Alright, so for reassembly, just want to make sure she'll fit on the stand because there is limited slide room. Got the O-rings in. There we go. Now hopefully we'll have room on the stand to make sure we got it will match up. Now, 
The main thing here to keep in mind is one, the acrylic is eventually going to burn through, so we can't run this for a very long time. And two, the O-rings will eventually fail as well. So, gotta gotta really uh, keep the runtime on this pretty damn short. Just trying to get those O-rings nice and compressed so that there's as little surface area exposed as possible. All right. She looks ready to roll. Tighten this down. And I think we are ready to test this sucker. Hook up my uh, patented check valve system. <laughs> Seriously, do not ever try that. You, uh, I'll be shocked if the hose doesn't catch on fire. Somehow I got away with it years ago, but I don't expect it to work indefinitely. All right, we got her hooked up to the O2. Got my face shield on, extinguishers on standby, and we're going to do just like the Russians, lighten our rockets with basically a matchstick. Alright, oxygen is on, get a little flow going. So the flame will go back just like so. We do have a little fire. Ah. Lovely. All right. <laughs> that was freaking awesome. Doesn't look like we burned through much of the acrylic. Wow. That is insane. Let's see if we can do a, a second little burn just to try to get a better view of the combustion chamber. All right, test two. Hopefully, we don't burn through the uh, through the chamber there. Just a tiny bit of oxygen going. here and you can see we were getting right on the edge there so the acrylic was starting to heat up enough that it was losing structural integrity and the axial compression from these nuts actually started swelling it coupled with the uh, internal pressure of the combustion chamber started swelling it there it's uh, it's still quite hot to the touch no longer in the uh, ooh, very hot over there the, the ass of it still feels pretty cool to the touch though, so that's good. No, no chance of uh, melting the aluminum or anything. That's excellent. Let's take her apart and see how she fared. I'm curious to see how the O-rings held up because they're, they're pretty much exposed directly to the combustion chamber. So the, uh, the face, the ceiling face, probably is being burned away pretty quickly. plate has a little warmth in it. These nuts have no pressure on them anymore. Just come right off. Now the other interesting thing during the burn was the nozzle pattern was not what I would have expected to see. Looked like we were getting some melted debris that was essentially clogging the nozzle and causing it to constantly <laughs> do uh, some thrust vectoring all by itself. Take that BPS space. <laughs> oh, let's see. She's on there. Woo! All right. Okay, so taking a look at the O ring. Focus. Yeah! Okay. O ring actually looks pretty good. It definitely uh, had quite a bit of life left in it. Looked like there might have been a little bit bypassing right there. You can see some 
some debris got by her. So maybe not. We we were right at the edge there. That O-ring had failed. So that was only maybe five seconds of runtime, ten seconds of runtime, not much. Obviously this would <laughs> not be used in any sort of commercial application. It's just a little redneck rocket. Quite a bit of a change in internal diameter there. Look at that. Whoo. And you can see how much it bulged. Pretty intense. Not the largest bulge in the garage, but <laughs> this one could cause a lot more damage. And our check valves. I don't see any signs of a uh, backflow, which is good. And they're still functioning, so that's good. So we didn't get any uh, any burning. I'd imagine there was some flashback into the first one. Let's take a gander here. Oh yeah. So here's the uh, the first check valve, the one closest to the combustion chamber. And it looks like it took quite a bit of heat. Yeah, it's it's shot. But the purpose of this wasn't truly to act as a check valve, just basically a path that the oxygen couldn't follow back to the hose, most importantly. So it, it did its job. But man, look at that. Let me grab the original drill bit I used just so we can see how much acrylic burn away that quickly. All right, so here's the original drill bit. Look at that difference. We went through quite a bit of acrylic in a very short run. Wow. You can smell the, you can still smell the, uh, like the burnt polymethyl methacrylate odor. It's a very unique smell. Pretty damn cool. So looking at the nozzle, Oh yeah, just to try to help you guys see in there, quite a bit of debris in the nozzle on the convergent section. Also, obviously quite a bit, where the hell's the light, on the divergent section as well. So hopefully in the future what I want to do is build a little stand so I can mount this on the Arduino test stand. Uh, so basically just something to retrofit it so it can sit vertical. Um, obviously I need the oxygen hose and everything to still be able to make it out. But basically just retrofit it. We can slap it on the Arduino test stand, shoot some oxygen into it and see what kind of pressure the sucker can generate. And then mess around with some different fuels. So obviously we got acrylic. Uh, one of the things I really want to try is asphalt. So my whole idea with the asphalt, basically cast it into this tube with a little core. Um, I'll probably get a stainless tube, so not so much of the walls occupied. Um, and then basically cast the asphalt with a core, because I don't think I'll be drilling through the stuff. And uh, see how that performs. I've heard asphalt is a phenomenal rocket fuel, and from some of the videos I've seen, it, it's a massive difference in, a, in overall thrust. Now I'm also curious to see if it, it, if it melts down like the acrylic does and blocks the nozzle. Well guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, click that little dingleberry next to subscribe so you can get notified when I post. And if you like the channel enough that you want to keep these videos rolling and trying to keep the channel as ad free as possible, please consider supporting me on Patreon. To all my current patrons, thank you so much for supporting the channel. I truly appreciate you guys. And I will see you guys next time. Have a great one.